What's happening in the Milton real estate market? This is a question that I get asked every day and the answer this month may just surprise you. Welcome to Milton Market Minute. I'm Shalene Enriquez with Remax Real Estate Center. Stay with us where we break down what's really happening in the Milton real estate market, giving you tips and strategies to help you make sense of it all. The May 2020 stats are in, and while we are in the middle of a pandemic, things are starting to open up, and the real estate market is definitely starting to pick up as well. In our local Milton real estate market, we are seeing that new listings that are priced well are moving very quickly quickly and in some cases with multiple offers and prices over asking. In May, across all home types, we had 131 sales, which represents about a 51% decrease off of May 2019. Year to date, sales are down about 26% in Milton. Year to date, we're sitting about 711 homes sold, whereas last year this time, we were 968 homes have been sold. Our average home price across all home types, that's detached to condos, townhomes, all home types, is up about 7.69% year to date over 2019. That increase though is largely because we had such a strong uh, first quarter, so January, February, March, where the average price at one point was almost 840,000. We were really in a white hot real estate market in the beginning of this year, pre-COVID. If you look at May 2020 though, to May 2019, home sales are roughly around the same, where we're slightly up on average about half a percent. Our average days on market for May were sitting at around 20, and our average list price to sale price ratio was 99%. Detached homes and condo apartments are sitting at around around 98%. On average, buyers are able to negotiate about 2% off of the asking price that you would see on the MLS. Having representation from a great local real estate agent who really understands the local market is critical in ensuring that you get the best value for your money. The number one question that I've been getting from buyers and sellers this month, are prices going to drop? Well, there were some scary news headlines this last week with CMHC announcing that they were going to be changing the way in which they qualify uh, folks that are buying a home with less than 20% down. So they announced that they would be increasing the minimum credit score to 680 and they also announced that they would be changing the ratios in which people qualify, the TDS GDS ratio. Now if you want a more of an explanation about what those ratios are, you can click through to another video. I'll make sure that I have a link to that um, so that you can learn about that a little bit more. So the result of these changes works out to be about an 11% decrease in purchasing power. Let me show you how this works. So to really understand the impact that the CMHC changes will have, I'm gonna do a quick calculation on my app. Um, so this is my uh, mortgage app here, um, and it is available for you to download. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and I will make sure that I put a link to it below. Um, it's really great, actually. You can um, calculate a stress test so you can know how much you can qualify for. Um, you can work out payment scenarios on there. Um, you can understand what the land transfer taxes will be on a purchase that you're considering. Um, and even it calculates your closing costs so there are no surprises for you. So it's very comprehensive, I love it. Um, and for this purposes today, we're going to um, calculate what the these changes from CMHC will be. So um, in order to do that, you would click on the stress test part. Um, so let's just do a scenario. Let's say um, you know a couple um, buying their first home and let's say combined income is $100,000. So what we would just put as gross annual income in is $100,000. We'll say you know property taxes potentially on their purchase would be around um, you know say $240 a month. So $2,800 for the year. Um, we'll say heat's about $100. Um, and we have an interest rate in there at 2.7 for an amortization of 25 years. 
Now, if this is all Greek to you, you can always reach out to me. I can help you with your uh, individual scenario or connect you with a mortgage broker. Um, but really what I just wanted to show you was the difference that these um, GDS, TDS ratios will make on your purchasing power um, with CMHC. Okay, so based on the information that we put in, the max loan would be 503 291. So that's with the 39, um, that was with the 3944 GDS TDS ratio. So let's now look at the new one which they brought down to, which is the 3542. So you're going to go from a uh, 503 to a 445640. So that's a pretty big decline. So the CMHC rules will definitely have an impact on purchasing power. There are a couple of other major players though, um, Jen Worth and Canada Guarantee, and they announced yesterday on June 8th that they are not going to be following suit with CMHC. So there are still options out there. Uh, you don't have to um, go through CMHC. You just need to be making sure that you're working with a lender that is able to, um, to go to these other uh, insurers. Um, because they decide that they are not going to change uh, their criteria. Hopefully that doesn't change in the future, but as of June 8th, that is what the announcement was. So in terms of prices decreasing, I think that, um, you know, if that CMHC change was across the board, I really feel it would have had a pretty big impact um, on home pricing, but seeing as um, now the other insurers have said that they're not going to follow suit, um, and we can see that demand is really high right now, um, even in the midst of this pandemic, but as things are starting to open up and um, people are starting to sort of get back into the swing of things, I see that there's there's still a lot of demand out there and there's not a lot of inventory. So looking forward, I can see that June is going to be even busier than May. Buyers are definitely back out there. The number of calls that I've been receiving with people who are um, curious about homes that are on the market has been increasing and listings are starting to come on the market. Now it's not going to be as busy as 2019, but definitely I can see that we are on an upward trajectory now. Interest rates remain low. Uh, inventory is very low and the buyers are coming out. So that is just a, a perfect mix of uh, indicating strong prices going forward. Now, if you are looking for your home's value or you're curious about what my formula is for helping folks win in real estate, then please reach out to me directly. I'm happy to have a virtual consultation with you and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.